Must be on call because it looks like your back end needs some attention. Welcome back everybody. Today we'll be doing some wrap ups of database indexes. Now I would like to implore all of you viewers because I consider myself a role model to all of you that this is the only time you should ever be dealing with anything pertaining to wrap ups. I recommend in all aspects of life. And in addition to that, as with systems design, you can always fall back on plan B. So without further ado and without any more corny jokes, let's get into the subject for today. All right, so let's go ahead and get into things. I've got the iPad up and we can get started. I've done a lot of pre-writing again, so we can hopefully make this an even faster lesson. So to basically wrap up the entire point of indexes, I mentioned this in the introduction to indexes video, but now that you know how they're actually implemented, you should understand this point a little bit better. The main point of indexes is the following. Obviously, we want to use them to get faster reads on a specific key value. That means, for example, if I have a bunch of different columns in a database table, I get to pick one of those columns, put an index on it, and I know now that if I'm searching for all columns with a value on that specific column, then it is going to be made quite significantly faster. On the contrary, the problem here now is that every single write that I do to this database table is going to be significantly slower. As opposed to just appending to the end of some you know, disk file, now I have to do that, plus also deal with the logarithmic time complexity that's incurred dealing with either a B tree or an LSM tree and SS tables. So for now, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, and basically the way I want to kind of think throughout this video is think about the index from an abstraction point of view. So for right now, let's throw out the kind of idea of the hash index and think about just the abstraction, right? So basically, if we have an index on a key, imagine that that basically means that we are sorting our database table by that key. The entire point is that our database is sorted so that we can do O of log n binary searches on it, both for individual row reads and also range queries. So imagine that we have some like almost like Twitter post database right here where we have an index on the username of the poster and then we also have like a date column and the actual text of what I posted. As you can see, the keys are themselves sorted in alphabetical order. So I know that if I were to ever go and look for the specific key that I want, it's not like finding a needle in a haystack anymore. There's actually an organized way of finding this key. And so again, that takes that read time complexity from a linear time scan to a logarithmic time scan, which is really huge especially when you have a super large database table. So this is kind of the main idea of indexes, right? We've taken this read, which would have been otherwise super complicated, we've made it a lot faster, and of course it is going to give us a write penalty. But when you are, for example, an app that heavily relies on making read speeds super fast for you know kind of good performance for your customers, that is sometimes a worthwhile trade-off. Everything in systems design has trade-offs, and the index is a perfect example of one of them that comes along with databases. Okay, so basically what we have written right over here, as you can see, this is what's called a clustered index. So I kind of acted as if all indexes were clustered indexes in my past videos, right, where I insinuated that the data of the row itself was stored within the index. So in this case, the data of the row would be the date and the text of the post. However, the truth of the matter is, a lot of times you're not necessarily using a clustered index. So the benefit of a clustered index is that you get faster reads, right? Because you literally go and search through your index, and then right once you're there, you can actually access the data directly. But instead, a lot of the time, what indexes will do is they will actually just go ahead and put the address of the corresponding row on disk within the index. So basically, the main advantage of this second type of index, where we've only got disk addresses instead of the actual data in the row, is less data duplication. So this is really, really huge for us in the sense mainly that uh, you know now we don't have to duplicate every single row in all of the indexes that we have. So one thing that you'll see in a lot of databases is that it's common to have more than one index. Perhaps there are two fields that we want to optimize our reads on. And so if we have two fields with indexes, that means that every single row that we write would have to entirely fit in both of those index. So imagine we took this entire gigantic uh, clustered index right here and had to double it. Now we're basically storing two times as much data and obviously that's going to be unacceptable if we're trying to optimize the amount of data that we're storing. It is not worth it to do that and so again that's why this kind of address index is the one that you see used more often in practice. There is also a middle ground known as kind of like a covered uh, index where as opposed to storing all of the fields like you see right here, maybe we would only store one important field and then the other one is elsewhere on disk or we would have you know an address on disk, whatever. 
Um, but the general point is, you know, we would only have a subset of fields in the index, and that kind of provides that trade-off where you're storing less data, but you know, you still have faster reads for the fields that we want in the index. Okay. So the last thing that I plan on covering in this video is the concept of a multi-dimensional index. So we've covered, you know, what an index on a single field is, but a lot of the times what you'll want is kind of a combo index, where not only do we have um, an index on one field, but within that sorted order, we also want uh, basically an internal sorted order. We don't just want it to be random. So imagine I was a social media site and I want to organize all of my posts first by the username of the poster and then also by the date that they posted, right? So for example, as you can see here, what's actually going to go ahead and happen is we have the name sorted and then the date sorted. So the, the later the date of posting, uh, basically the later down it's going to be in that database table. Keep in mind, this is in contrast to having two separate indexes on the name and date field, right? So for example, if we were to have an index on the date field, then the rows would actually be in chronological order, and it would be something like, you know, January 1st, then February 5th, then March 10th, then over here June 1st, then September 10th, and then December 1st. So the order would completely switch if we wanted an index just on the date field. But because we have this kind of multi-dimensional composite index, it's one sort order, first on the name, and then afterwards we sort every single key internally on the name in the date. And so that is also a really useful feature. That is as if you just had one index, right? Two separate indexes will sort each field individually. So I just wanted to go ahead and clear that up. All right, everyone. Well, I hope this video was useful. Um, looking forward to seeing you guys in the next one. I'm going to switch up the order a little bit from my original series because I'm thinking that it will benefit us to kind of do all the database internal stuff first, and then we can start talking about things like replication and partitioning, where we're going not just from one computer or one database, but to many database nodes in a cluster. Okay, looking forward to it, and I will see you guys in the next one.